Hi everybody, my name is Nikki Vradenberg and I'm excited to be talking to you today about a resource called PBS Learning Media. I work for Montana PBS, I'm the Director of Education. Uh, before I stepped into this role, I was an elementary school teacher teaching at a rural school east of Bozeman. I got to step into this role in 2017 and I've been able to work with teachers all over the state of Montana to use digital resources in their classroom. This, web, this session is going to be about our free website for teachers called pbslearningmedia.org. I'm really excited to share it with you today and hopefully when you leave the session you'll feel comfortable using this with your students. If you ever needed to get a hold of me, please reach out. Um, Nikki at MontanaPBS.org and I'm also very active on Twitter. I'm happy to answer your questions and help you implement this site as much as you need to. You can also find Montana PBS online. We're connected on Facebook and Instagram, Twitter. We also have a closed Facebook group for teachers. If you search for MT PBS Teachers on Facebook, ask to be added, we'd be happy to add you so you can learn about all the events that we have coming up for teachers all of the great resources as they're created. It's also a wonderful community to share ideas and encourage one another as we work with kids in Montana. I also wanna quickly share a, an initiative that we started uh, during the pandemic in the spring of 2020 and have continued this fall called Learn at Home. Uh, we understand that kids are learning at home full-time and part-time and we wanted to provide a service for both families and for teachers that would support learning at home. We revised our broadcast schedule to choose programming aligned to Montana State standards for kids in pre-K through eighth grade. Um, you can tune in during the weekdays, Monday through Friday during these blocks of time to view educational programs in the areas of math, literacy, social studies, STEM, Montana history, the arts and humanities and career and technology education. If you visit our website, which is linked in the notes of this slide, you can see the full schedule of all of the programs that will be airing. We hope that you'll be able to use those in your lessons and as you're planning things for students. We have linked every single program with a digital resource online, uh, hoping that maybe kids in the classroom can also learn from these programs in that setting. If we can help you use Learn at Home with your students in any way or share it with families in your communities, please reach out and we'd be happy to hear uh, what we can do to support you. So the website I'm, I'm sharing with teachers today is this free website called pbslearningmedia.org. Uh, to use this site and get the most out of it, you should start free account. You can do that by going to pbslearningmedia.org go to the blue button that says sign up. You can use either your Google or Facebook credentials to sign on quickly, or you can enter another email address and password. Here's more about logging in. Logging in will allow you to save materials on this resource, and it will also allow us to send you updates and new features that will be added to the website. The types of resources you can find on PBS Learning Media are listed here. The most popular would be video. PBS Learning Media is a repository of resources compiled and curated from PBS stations all over the country. When PBS did research about their resources and who seemed to be using them the most, teachers came to the top of the list. When they dug deeper, they realized that teachers were buying DVDs of PBS documentaries and uh, with their own money and watching them and putting sticky notes on the outside of the case with the certain clips from the documentaries they wanted to show in their class. And while this was very innovative, PBS realized that they could help teachers by putting clips from documentaries and PBS programs on this one website. They edited them, we've edited documentaries and shows into classroom ready site lengths, seven to 10 minutes. Um, align them to state standards and national standards, and then most of them also have support materials, such as lesson plans and graphic organizers, discussion questions, aligned to each of the resources on learning media. While many collections have national programs featured, you can also find some of our Montana produ productions there as well. 
while this site is meant to hold smaller edited pieces from films created for you with the understanding that we probably don't have the time to show some of the three to 13 hour documentaries that air on PBS. There aren't many full episodes available on this site. However, if you like Nova and you like Ken Burns documentaries and you need to watch the whole film for your own context, there are some full length documentaries available on the website. When you get to the site, you can browse uh, in a number of ways. You can choose topics, you can choose by standard, you can choose grade level, you can do subject. Um, when you sign up for an account, make sure that you click your zip code. That will match you to Montana PBS and the Montana State Standards. It will now, it will, you'll see the Montana PBS logo appear at the top of the site. You're looking at the same site that the rest of the country looks at, but now you've been classified as a Montana educator so that your Montana standards will appear in the resources when you're searching. Some of our feature resources, uh, this one here was created by Craig Beals, who is a Montana State Teacher of the Year. He produces his own chemistry videos, and this is one that he's uh, produced on his own and then allowed us to upload. Craig's collection was created on the idea that um, you too can teach these, do these things at home. I think this, is, this, this collection is especially useful during our remote learning situation with kids needing to do highly engaging science things, perhaps at home with the help of an adult. So I encourage you to check out Craig's collection. Another recent collection is the Xavier Riddle and the Secret Museum series that launched about a year ago on PBS Kids. This series was created after a set of series of books called Ordinary People Change the World. Um, uh, to encourage students to look toward historical figures when choosing their heroes. In the series, Xavier and his friends use a time machine to travel back in time and visit historical characters such as Helen Keller and Harriet Tubman, but they meet them when the characters were children and they learn about the character traits that they, those characters possessed that helped them achieve greatness. There is a collection on PBS Learning Media devoted to Xavier Riddle with graphic organizers and um, PDFs that can be printed or uploaded to tools like Seesaw or input into Google Classroom. There's also video clips from the show. We also recommend checking out pbskids.org where you can find games um, linked to Xavier Riddle and the Secret Museum. In this part, we have a resource sampler. Now, often I share, and you'll see this in the notes section of this, of this slide deck, which should have been linked to this course. Often I'll share the learning media website with teachers and they suddenly become a little bit overwhelmed by the website and all that it has to offer. And so linked in the notes of this slide is, or directly to this slide, is what I call a sampler deck. And you can go to the sampler deck and find your grade level and your topic area. And click here, you'll have three resources to sample. And so if this were a live training, I would stop talking and I would encourage you to find the slide that corresponds with your grade level and your content area and look at some of the resources that are available to you on PBS Learning Media and get a feel for what they look like. What I'm going to do instead of give you time to explore the sampler deck is I'm just going to model for you how to find the website and how you might search for things on pbslearningmedia.org. So if I go to my browser in my Google section and I come to my bar, I can write pbslearningmedia.org and I go to that site a lot, so it shows up for me. pbslearningmedia.org takes us to this website right here. At the website, we can, like I said, search by topic. We can search by subject. We can search by grade level. Um, we can also search by standard. 
depending on where you are. I'm going to stop sharing briefly and make sure that I'm sharing the right screen. I may have to do that all over again. All right. Now, as I'm on PBS Learning Media, I can scroll down here and find some news and events, and there may be some professional learning opportunities. You can also see some of the collections that are worth checking out, as well as some other events that are coming up. What I often do is, let's say that it is October, and if you're an elementary school teacher, you might be looking for resources for supporting Halloween with your students. So Halloween got me a search of 27 results, and I've got quite a few things to look through, but I may not have a lot of time to look at every single one of these. The Halloween collection looks promising. That looks like it's a collection that's been created by PBS Kids at the national level. If I look at it, it looks like I've got a word search, I've got a video, I've got some things from Ready, Jet, Go, Sid the Science Kid, Cyber Chase, a lot of different videos that I might be able to watch. So let's say I'm interested in this Cyber Chase activity. It looks like it's a support material, because it says support material. Um, but it also it's a video with support materials, I should say. This one's a media gallery, which means it's going to have some videos and things, but there's no support materials that go along with it. So I'm going to check out this one that says, Bianca gets a present. So I can see here it's a video. It has support materials, which I can navigate to just by touching support materials. And I have some teaching tips and some further information to go along with that. You can also see where there's the standards that are connected to this resource. And because I'm registered with the zip code in Montana, I can see the Montana state standards. Something else to note about the resource is we can share this directly to Google Classroom by clicking this link right here, and it will open up my Google Classroom page. Um, I'm, what, depending on the account I'm logged into, I can choose the, the class I might want to put it into. I have a lot of videos, a lot of classrooms here for testing. Um, I'll just assign it to this one, and I can create an assignment right there, and then press go. It'll allow me to add some things. I'm just going to write testing one, two, three to this one. It's already linked the resource right there. I can add points if I want to. I can add a due date if I want to. I'm filming this in August, so you will, that will be well past by the time you're watching this. Add it to one of my topics right here, just outside of the page, and then click assign. And when I go back to my Google Classroom, it will show up there for my students to see in real time. So that's one thing. I could assign it or share it if I wanted to import my Google Classroom into this PBS Learning Media site and create lessons within the site. I could do that. I could look directly at the support materials here. The thing I want to point out is this part where I can favorite it. I, if I touch this heart, you see I touched it, it filled up. So now it's blue. This means this resource is saved in a collection of my saved resources. So the next time I log into this website, I can go to my favorites and find this for later. Another thing to note, uh, this particular resource has a download option, which I always recommend to teachers that if you can find things that can be downloaded, that saves you in case suddenly the internet goes down. Um, or if you have kids learning at home and they're unable to access things or Wi-Fi is not very good, you might be able to send the video directly to them somehow or upload it to Google Classroom directly to them. So not all videos have that feature. Some of them are, are stream only and that just depends on the broadcast rights of the particular documentary. Down here, they also align it to other resources that may be of interest to you. And then they tag the curriculum that that goes along with. Over here, this is the, the station, WNET, the station that contributed this resource. If you end up liking this resource, you could also go through and search um, by this particular station. Going down here, Cyber Chase is a popular show on PBS Kids, really geared toward kids ages or 
in grades uh, three to five and it's all about math and problem solving. So if you find you like this activity and you'd like to check out more resources, most activities are part of larger collections. And so you could go to this collection. So it's kind of a tour of the resources. When I head back like this, and I go back to my initial search, remember I searched Halloween, I got these 27 results. Um, and maybe I'm an older kids teacher and I'm not really looking for something PBS kids. I can come over here and filter these results by grade level. And I always recommend that teachers search for the grade level above or below because whoever is tagging these resources may not, you know, may think that it's appropriate for a younger audience when it probably would be fine for an older audience or vice versa. So if I teach fourth grade, I'm gonna tag fourth and fifth um, and sixth, I might see if there's something even a little bit older for my kids. So now it's filtered it down to 19 and it brings up a lot more of those, those cyber chase things. There's a second page here of some results and oh, hmm, that's an interesting one. Halloween special, watch flesh eating beetles strip bodies to the bone. I think that is enough to get some of my, my fourth and fifth grade kiddos interested. Um, this is a three minute video. It is a video and it's actually intended for grades six through 12. So probably one I want to watch to make sure that it, you know, it's going to work for my fourth grade audience. This one doesn't have support materials. It's just aligned to the standards and it may, but it does come from a larger collection called a deep look. So it looks like it has a lot of nature based activities that your kiddos might like. So I might favorite that one too. So let's say you've done some favoriting, you saved some resources, and you'd like to go back and look at those. You come up here to where you'll see your name in the upper right hand corner, touch your name, and now you have a lot of choices. You can go to a dashboard, you can find your favorites, you can uh, create folders of favorites, assignments, classes, tools, profile, and logout. Since this is an introductory session, I'm just gonna to talk to you about a few of these options. You can feel free to click around and play with the others after the session is over. When I wanna see the things that I favorited, those things that I've marked the heart, I just go to favorites. And it's going to provide a list of all of the things that I have marked with a favorite. And so this is, I've got pages and pages and pages of my favorites. Now I've taken some of these things and I've decided I want to put these things in a folder. And so I'm, I've checked the box next to them and I'm choosing add to folder. And I'm gonna make, I've got all these folders that I've created, but I'm gonna make a new folder and call it Halloween. Cause I wanna find a lot, maybe I'm working on a choice board or a hyperdoc or something that's gonna be focused on Halloween content. So I'm gonna make a folder. Now you can see those resources have been tagged with Halloween over here. I could also put some notes over here. Um, be sure to watch this before assigning it. It's always good to spell assigning correct. I might add some notes over here. Without, now, what I can do now is I can go here, over here is where folders are. I, these are all the folders I've created that are saved under my account. Um, when I refresh and come back to my favorites, Halloween appears right here. When I click Halloween, it shows me just the two folders, the two things that I have saved. Now, the other option here is this folder now has its own hyperlink. So if I wanted to share this folder with another teacher, or I wanted to put it in a Facebook group or put it on Twitter, I could copy and paste this hyperlink and share these resources with anyone who might want to use them. They'll be able to access them they won't even need to have an account to use the resources. Um, they would need an account to save the resources though. So those are, that's a little bit about uh, creating folders and building um, favorites. 
And now I would encourage you to play around, hopefully you're already playing around with learning media, thinking about maybe finding your subject area. Maybe you're looking for social studies activities and you could look for social studies. You could look for a grade level and go through and find some resources that you might be able to use. I'm gonna go back to my slides here and we'll scroll down. There's also a student view of PBS Learning Media and it is pbslearningmedia.org slash student. This was created so that possibly this site could be used for students for doing their own research. So if you are at the PBS Learning Media website and you're on the, the main page right here and you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see a blue button right here that says for students. When you touch that button, it will switch over to the student view of the site. And so now students can go through and kind of touch on these tiles and, and find resources that they might want to explore independently. This is also the tool that if you were to create an assignment in learning media, the students would come to this site and enter that assignment code. Again, assignments in learning media are more of a level two training, so um, you'll have to <laughs> sign up with us for one of those. This is just the level one. But that is PBS Learning Media for students. Um, if I want to go back to for teachers, I just hit my back button and that takes me to the teacher view of PBS Learning Media. Let me go back into present mode. Some collections on learning media that are newer is the Ken Burns in the Classroom collection. If you are a fan of Ken Burns documentaries, you will love this collection. Um, many of his films have been edited into small bite-sized pieces to show students clips, um, but there are, you would have access to full-length films. Um, a lot of the films are aligned to some support materials and discussion questions, lesson plans, things like that. There's also a new collection about civil rights then and now, a uh, very important topic given recent events. So guiding your students through an understanding of the history of civil rights, you can use the, those resources for that. And then one of the newer shows on PBS Kids is called Hero Elementary. Uh, this is a science program intended for pre-K to first grade students. The characters on this program are probably some of the more diverse characters we have on, on a PBS program. Each character represents either a, a child who is um, from a different community, there is a child who ha is, on the, uh, is on the spectrum, and um, one of the first PBS characters to be on the spectrum. Each character has a, a superpower, which is actually the science practice standards, so they might have the power of obser observation um, or the power of experimentation, things like that. And there's some really great hands-on activities that are aligned to that program for teaching kids about the science practices. You can also go to Montana, search for Montana specific materials by searching Montana PBS. And you'll see some of our Montana history materials. Um, those of you teaching fourth and eighth grade, teaching Montana history, uh, teachers love our resources. Um, we have the Montana Mosaics collection, uh, a collection aligned to the Bozeman Trail and Indian Relay, and then a collection called Great States, which has about 12 units for teaching Montana history and meeting Montana history standards. Some things to think about when you're searching PBS Learning Media. You can search by program. So if you're, you're interested in Frontline or NOVA, you can type that in. Using quotation marks helps you uh, put the terms together. I, I mentioned expanding your grade levels. Even if you teach kindergarten, look for things in pre-K and look for things in first grade just to give yourself a, a wider net. Um, make sure to explore the additional resources. Maybe the, the resource you click on isn't the right one, but there might be one linked to it that will work. As you're searching, find, find stations, PBS stations that create content 
that you seem that you really like. Uh, of course, Montana PBS, we want you to look for, but some of the big creation stations are listed on this slide. WGBH is the station that most of our programs at the national level come through, Arthur and Molly and Denali are all created there. KET uh, creates a lot of content. KQED is going to have a lot of resources for teaching media literacy um, and helping kids create media and giving you some, re some resources for talking to students about issues that happen in current events. Um, Prairie Public Television and Idaho Public Television are also stations that are creating high quality, engaging content for the PBS Learning Media. Some of the collections I recommend that you check out and they're linked to this slide, PBS Idea Channel, some really great, fun, fast, easy to watch uh, shows about a, a variety of different topics but they're created uh, frequently and always refreshed and um, engaging with, with current content. The PBS NewsHour Daily News Story takes a current event story and builds it into a lesson plan. And they're always adding to that collection as well. So a great way to help kids familiarize themselves with current events or to sort through and understand what's happening in the news is to give this an assignment. Remember, this could be added to Google Classroom and it could be an asynchronous assignment for students there. I mentioned Montana Mosaic is a Montana history collection. It's from the film created by the Montana Historical Society, Montana Mosaic, and aligned to the textbook that was created by the Montana Historical Society. Ready to Learn is the grant funded initiative, um, a partnership between PBS and the Department of Education that goes through three to four year cycles, creating content specifically for early childhood educators and families of children ages zero or three to eight. Um, shows like Molly of Denali and um, Curious George and the Cat in the Hat knows a lot about that all came from that grant. If you search for Ready to Learn on PBS Learning Media, you'll find research-based resources for classrooms and for families using those programs in areas of literacy, math, and STEM, and social studies. Odd Squad is another favorite program for teaching kids about math and problem solving and um, overall just fun. <laughs> Odd Squad's just a fun show. Uh, that would be for kids in third through fifth grade is what Odd Squad is geared for. This slide has some um, quick sheets that were created by a colleague of mine in North Dakota at Prairie Public. Each of these is a resource sheet for this particular grade level and content area. Again, helping you narrow down to a certain type of resource. A lot of times teachers just don't even know what to look for because there are so many resources on learning media. Sometimes starting with one of these curated resource lists is a great way to find something for your students. I want to give you a couple examples of how PBS media is being used in classrooms or how I used it when I was teaching. The first was an activity I did in a classroom, a second grade classroom, um, uses what's called a guided viewing activity. And this is definitely something that could be done remotely as well. So it, it started with giving the students a worksheet that looked like this, um, which is open Microsoft Docs, or not Microsoft, Microsoft Office or uh, Google Doc, insert table, uh, three by 10 or however many you want. Um, and I listed some questions that were the discussion questions that were part of this resource. So when you open up this video to be a bird, these discussion questions were listed. And I just pasted them into this um, graphic organizer. And then I had students answer the question before watching the video to, to really summarize what they already knew. Some of the questions you really do have to watch the video to know the answer, but it really was a great way to gather their prior knowledge. Then I had them watch the video with the graphic organizer on hand so they could fill in answers over here as they watched. 
I did this in a real live classroom, and so I paused the video as the answer to each question came up so they could write it down. In a remote learning situation, you might just encourage them to use the pause button to write things down as they hear it. You may also have them watch the whole video and fill out the, um, the worksheet afterwards. So that's one way we can use uh, guided viewing activities to watch media. Uh, another resource I did or another activity I did was a, a, a moments of wonder daily routine. Learning media has a lot of images. You can just search for images. And I went through and chose some images and put them on a Google slide presentation, a different one for each day. And this was an activity I did with fourth and fifth graders. So they would come into the room and see the image. And then I had these questions that I wanted them to consider and think about the image. And they just had a blank journal that they wrote the answers to these questions in. So in a remote learning situation, you might just post the picture with these questions and they can just use the Google Classroom comment feature to put in their ideas. They could also use the commenting feature on the Google slide presentation if you have these images on a Google slide. What I like about this type of activity is that it encourages visual literacy. It allows students to look longer, um, to think about what they see, to really put themselves in the picture, which is uh, one of the skills that we need to help students to think about when they're becoming media literate. Interactive lessons are um, available in learning media. You can search for interactive lessons. And these are self-paced lessons that are meant to be done digitally. They are, uh, there are K through 12 lessons available in a variety of content areas. Um, the idea is that you would assign the lesson to a student and they would uh, watch a video, answer a question, um, look at an image, fill out a graphic organizer, all built into these interactive lessons. Um, there are more and more being added to the platform. In fact, Montana PBS is working on one about Charlie Russell, the cowboy artist right now. They're really perfect for remote learning and distance learning because the students are meant to uh, log in and work at their own pace through this interactive lesson that gives them the opportunity to explore media and read primary sources and look at documents and then reflect on their learning as they work through that interactive lesson. Oops, go back. You can also use it as a tool such as Flipgrid. And this was a Flipgrid, my students in my class at Lamont School. Um, we posted a video and then they were responding to that video using Flipgrid. You can also, this is an example of what it might look like if you posted things in Google Classroom. Uh, these were cyber chase videos that we just, I just posted in the Google Classroom and then encourage kids to use the comments to talk about playing the game and what they learned playing the game. You can also create a storyboard in the Google, in the uh, learning media platform, um, which would allow you to put multiple pieces of media images or videos and give the kids a link to just the storyboard and they could watch the videos and interact with the content and the media that way. PBS has some other great resources for teachers that I hope you'll be inspired to check out after this. Consider looking at the PBS Teachers Lounge, which is a blog created by the national education team. They enlist the help of teachers all over the country to write blog posts about um, the things that they're doing in their classroom. And, and it's also a great place to find virtual learning opportunities that are being um, promoted and hosted by the, the national team. We're also excited that there's a PBS Media Literacy Certification Program. It's developed by our colleagues at KQED in San Francisco. Montana PBS supports teachers to earn these eight micro-credentials to become media literacy certified. This is Sarah Dahl, uh, a teacher, tech coach in Park High in Livingston, Montana. She was the first teacher in the state of Montana to achieve PBS Media Literacy Certification. 
at the time of this recording, we had nine PBS Media Literacy Certified Teachers in the state of Montana. We host an online cohort of teachers. Uh, we meet once a month to go through the, certi go through the micro credentials um, and the work that needs to be done to earn this certification. To become certified, you have to earn eight micro credentials. To earn a micro credential, you create a lesson plan, you teach with the lesson plan, uh, you gather some work samples from the lesson, you upload load all of that into a website called Digital Promise, and you write a reflective summary about your work and how it went, and then you wait, and if you're awarded the micro credential, you move on to the next one. So it allows you to sharpen your skills in analyzing media, um, evaluating online resources, creating media for teaching, assessing student-created media, and integrating media projects across your content area. So please check out our website, um, and the link to this program is in the, this slide if you're interested in this program. Another great program for elementary and upper, maybe middle school, I suppose, uh, PBS Kids Design Squad Global. This free website allows kids to do fun STEM projects. It's a good home learning website. They can go to the design or the build tab and it will give them a tutorial about how to build all kinds of things using recycled materials and things just around the house. If you have young children, children's ages zero to eight, you can share this resource with their families, PBS Kids for Parents. We recommend signing up for the newsletter to get regular tips and tricks and parenting things for kids. There is a learn at home section to the PBS Kids newsletter too that gives families of young children resources for helping their children. Um, you can also search for things by the child's age on this website. So if we were live and in person, I would have you choose a topic that you were going to teach and open up PBS Learning Media, create a folder, save your resources, and share that folder with someone else. Um, I invite you to do that challenge right now if you would like to maybe pause the training or maybe when we're all done, um, poke around and see if you can do that. Of course, questions I'll be available in the chat box right after you finish watching this recording. Um, feel free to ask any questions you have about this resource. Again, it's web-based, it works on all browsers, and it works on mobile technology, and it is free and will always be free. Remember to connect with Montana PBS, and find our, what, our Facebook and join our Facebook group. You can find my email right there and you can find us on all other platforms. We also have a Montana PBS app if you'd like to stay in touch that way. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope you're enjoying the virtual MFPE conference. Please reach out if anyone at Montana PBS can help you with anything.